WAND News at Noon starts now. We begin with breaking news at noon. Authorities now on scene on I-55 in Lincoln as they're trying to arrest an armed suspect wanted for shooting a U.S. Marshals officer in Rockford. This is video from I-55 in Logan County near Funks Grove about an hour ago. State police cars speeding after the suspect. Now this man is from central Illinois and he's wanted for crimes here. WAND's Matt Loveless has been tracking this story since it first broke. He joins us now with the latest developments. Matt. Good afternoon, Meredith. We just learned the suspected shooter is from Springfield and that he's wanted accused of several crimes in Bloomington. Investigators say Floyd Brown shot an officer from the U.S. Marshal's Office in Rockford this morning. That happened around 9 o'clock at an extended stay America hotel there. Brown is now on the run and is considered armed and dangerous. Now, Brown's been on the run from the law since December. He's wanted in Bloomington. Police say Brown is responsible for at least one home break in there in December. That he also crashed his car into other vehicles before running off and disappearing. And we've just learned from the Macon County court records that Floyd Brown does have a criminal history here that includes a guilty plea for residential burglary in 2011 and two cases for speeding well over the speed limit, including once in 2010 for going 21 to 25 miles an hour over. Again, Floyd is now in Logan County near Lincoln. A large law enforcement force is on the scene right now trying to bring him into custody. The Logan County Sheriff's Office just sent out an advisory asking all drivers to avoid I-55 north of Lincoln at this time. WAND News is sending multiple crews out to that scene right now. Be sure to stay with us on the air and online for the latest developments. Uh, we're following some breaking news right now out of Logan County. WAND's Joe Ostrowski is live with the latest. Hey, uh, Joe Ostrowski here. We are uh, to the northwest, I believe, of Lincoln along Interstate 55. We've been told by authorities that Floyd Brown was involved in a crash. Uh, we've seen the northbound lanes of I-55 stopped, apparently at the site of that crash. We're also seeing state police and other police vehicles rushing past us on a rural road. Again, traffic northbound on Interstate 55 appears to be stopped. Uh, difficult to see exactly what is there on the interstate. We're a few a hundred yards away. We're trying to get you the best pictures of that that we can to show you what's going on there. Again, though, no traffic heading northbound. We're hearing a helicopter overhead. Not clear if that's a police helicopter or a news helicopter from elsewhere. Uh, but again, a large police presence on the interstate on I-55. A number of police traveling these rural roads as well. We've been told that there is an alert from local authorities warning people to stay on alert, to remain vigilant, to lock their doors, uh, and to, uh, to to stay safe above all else, and to avoid traffic on I-55 in that area. Again, you're not going to get anywhere if you try heading up that way. Uh, we're going to stay here and continue to try to get as much information as we can uh, and bring that to you as best we can. Live in Logan County. Joe Ostrowski, WAND News. All right, thank you, Joe. And to re reiterate what he's talking about, uh, we've been following breaking news for several hours. Authorities, as Joe said, on I-55 in Lincoln attempting to arrest an armed suspect wanted for shooting a U.S. Marshals officer in Rockford. We're going to keep you updated through the rest of the noon show. Stay with us. WAND News is continuing to follow breaking news at our noon hour. Authorities still trying to arrest the suspect wanted for shooting a U.S. Marshals officer in Rockford. We're going to take a live look right now at the scene north of Lincoln where that suspect reportedly crashing after leading authorities on a high speed chase. I'm tossing over now to Matt Loveless. He's in studio with the latest information. All right, thank you very much, Meredith. This is Floyd Brown. He is the suspect wanted for that shooting in Rockford and then leading state police on a high speed chase from there all the way down to Logan County. News Herald, New Herald News reports Floyd Brown is now on foot armed with an AK-47. Shots have been fired. Lincoln residents have been asked to stay in their homes. Lock your doors. Now, investigators say Floyd Brown shot an officer from the U.S. Marshal's Office in Rockford this morning. That happened at around 9 at an extended Stay America Hotel there. No word on the officer's condition at this time, but reports say authorities were trying to serve a warrant for Brown. 
Now, Brown's been on the run from the law since December. He's wanted in Bloomington. Police say Brown is responsible for at least one home break in there in December and that he also crashed his car into other vehicles before running off and disappearing. But now after leading state police on a chase, Brown is now along I-55 north of Lincoln. The sheriff there wants all drivers to avoid the area for now. WAD News now learning more about Floyd Brown. He has 15 pages of criminal records from Sangamon County. Again, Brown's from Springfield. He also has a guilty plea for residential burglary, and he was involved in two cases for going well over the speed limit in Macon County. Now, WAD's Joe Ostrowski has just arrived at the scene. We just heard from him. We'll get another update where all of this is happening in Logan County. Joe, what can you tell us? Yeah, authorities have confirmed to us again that there was a crash in that search for Floyd Brown. We are along Interstate 55 in Logan County, and I'm going to get out of the way and let you have a look here. Um, you can see on this ramp uh, heading upward uh, on I-55, uh, traffic is stopped. A large police presence out there. We're trying to zoom in as best we can to get you uh, a view of what is going on there. Again, no, uh, no movement at all northbound on I-55. Uh, lots of police stopping the road there, uh, stopping traffic there. We're hearing also a helicopter overhead. Unclear, though, if that is a police helicopter taking part in the search or a press news helicopter. Uh, that not clear. We can't see it that well. But again, uh, a number of police vehicles on I-55 uh, here in Logan County. We're showing you those as best we can. Uh, we're being told by uh, by local officials that they're asking people to uh, who are in this part of Logan County to uh, uh, to uh, take precautions, be vigilant, lock their doors uh, as this search continues. Uh, we will continue following it here uh, and bring you uh, as much information as we can as soon as we can. Live in Logan County, Joe Ostrowski, WAND News. All right, thank you very much, Joan. As we said, New Herald News reports Floyd Brown is now on foot, armed with an AK-47, and shots have been fired. We're going to keep you updated with the latest news as we get it. Yeah, just a few minutes ago, law enforcement told my photographer and I that we needed to move because we were in the line of fire, in his words. So we've relocated. We are uh, on the west side of I-55. Uh, some of the roads behind me had been blocked, but uh, law enforcement have opened them back up. At this point, we can hear a, an airplane overhead. Um, we've seen traffic northbound on I-55 stopped at the apparent site of that crash, uh, while uh, a number of law enforcement are deployed out there on the interstate. My colleague, Doug Wolf is uh, near the uh, near the intersection of uh, I-55 and Business 55 north of Lincoln. Uh, he joins us now, Doug. Joe, I'm uh, about uh, a half a mile to a quarter of a mile from where the uh, gunman apparently got out of that car. I'm standing at Top Flight Grain Company. It's a grain elevator that sits along Old Route 66, right by the intersection of Interstate 55. Now, this is a staging area, it appears. There's Logan County Sheriff's Department, State Police, and Lincoln Police. When we came into town, traffic was being diverted off of Interstate 55 down into the city of Lincoln. The problem was then, uh, as we came in, Old Route 121 was then blocked off by the Lincoln Police to keep people from going north on Old Route 121. A lot of activity here, but again, uh, it's a staging area. I'm sure the police are taking their commands from this area. Several police cars, an ambulance, and uh, we just saw right now a, uh, another police vehicle coming by from the Logan County Sheriff's Department. This is about as close as we're going to get uh, to wherever they're searching right now. We can still see up onto the interstate quite a few police cars up and down the interstate uh, where that incident took place. Uh, where they eventually stopped that car that was pers being pursued at some really high speeds. We heard it on the scanner in the newsroom about an hour ago, and uh, some of these speeds this guy was going easily over 100 miles an hour. Anyway, that's the latest from here. We will, of course, have updates throughout the day, and tonight on WAND News at 4, 5, and 6. Reporting live in Lincoln, I'm Doug Wolf for WAND News. All right, thank you to both Doug and to Joe. Team coverage right now, Matt, you've been following this since it broke. A lot going on. Right, a lot going on, and uh, we just listened to some information. Our partners in Rockford at WREX talked to Lieutenant Andre Brass with Rockford Police. He stressed that this is still an ongoing situation. He said businesses don't have to shut down, don't feel required to lock down, but if it's part of your protocol, go ahead and do that.
Breaking this afternoon, negotiations continue in Logan County with the suspect who police say shot and killed a U.S. Marshal in Rockford. This is video of the police chase this afternoon as officers pursued the man from Rockford all the way down to Lincoln, where he crashed into a ravine. Thank you for joining us. I'm Darren Mullen. That suspect, Floyd Brown, remains in that ravine as police negotiate with him. We have team coverage this afternoon as those negotiations continue. WAND's Joe Ostrowski has been in Logan County all afternoon. Joe, what have you seen so far? Yeah, Darren, we're near the uh, interchange, the uh, intersection of I-55 and Business 55. You can see the interstate behind me. Uh, there's some cars off in the distance that are stopped up there. We've seen police vehicles on the interstate. Uh, traffic to the north uh, southbound is backed up. So southbound traffic backed up as those negotiations continue. We've had to sort of make our way around some of the rural roads today because police have asked us to move from one place to another, telling us at one point that we were in the line of fire. Uh, again, they're warning people locally to be cautious, to be vigilant as those negotiations continue. And uh, just within the past hour or so, uh, our uh, colleague Doug Wolf uh, spoke with uh, state police about uh, this ongoing situation and the newest that they know today. Doug, what'd you learn? Well, the state police, first of all, they confirmed that that officer uh, was a McHenry County deputy who was working with the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force, that he did indeed die. A woman was also shot in Rockford. She survived. She was not shot by police, basically leaving the assumption that she might have been shot by this individual as well, and that she also may have been a relative. Now, one of the other things is a, a reporter asked the uh, state police, hey, why not just take this guy out and reopen traffic and get everything moving and let it be done? And the state police said they're trying to do this peacefully, hopefully get a peaceful end to this situation without taking someone else's life. So again, state police have this individual in a ravine in his car. He is basically not going to go anywhere. There, there's a, like an army of state police here and uh, Logan County Sheriff's deputies. He's not going anywhere. At some point, it will come to an end, but uh, hopefully, as the state police said, it will come to a peaceful end with that person being taken into custody. We're, of course, going to have more coming up at 5 o'clock. This is Doug Wolf reporting live with Joe Ostrowski in Lincoln. Back to you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Doug. We continue our team coverage. WAD Sean Streety joins us now. Sean, you have been digging into Brown's criminal history over the past few hours. What have you found so mm, far? I certainly have found a lot. I'm not talking about an angel here by any means. Currently, he is wanted on parole, is on parole, I should say. Violation of warrants are out for him in McLean, Sangamon, as well as Champaign counties. In fact, Illinois Department of Correction records show Brown is on parole after being convicted of a series of burglaries in McLean and Macon counties back in 2011. In Macon County, Brown had three cases of home burglaries in 2011. He also had another home burglary case in McLean County that same year. He turned himself in in Sangamon County in 2010 after being accused of kidnapping two girls, his 16 year old girlfriend and her three year old daughter. Both were found safe. Also in Sangamon County, Floyd Brown had cases involving violating a restraining order for domestic violence, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. Just some of it. Also facing weapon charges and unlawful restraint, Darren. Just into the newsroom, we now know the name of the U.S. Marshal killed in today's shooting in Rockford. McHenry County Sheriff says Deputy Jacob Keltner is the U.S. Marshal shot and killed in Rockford this morning. He was a deputy on the force for almost 13 years. Again, the gunman Floyd Brown led police on a chase and crash near Lincoln on I-55. Our crews remain on scene tonight and we will have more coming up at 5. We'll be right back. At 5 starts now. All of Illinois grieves for the fallen. A U.S. Marshals officer shot and killed in Rockford. A high-speed chase ending in central Illinois and a standoff between state police and a Springfield man believed to be armed with an AK-47. Good evening and thanks for joining us at 5. The WAD News continuing to learn new information about what happened and why. After an attempted arrest led to gunshots, an officer down and now a police standoff in Logan County. First, the McHenry County Sheriff's Office identifying the deputy who was shot and killed. This post they put on Facebook marks the end of watch for 35-year-old Deputy Jake Keltner. The post says Keltner passed away just after 3.30 this afternoon. He was a deputy for almost 
13 years. WAND News has had full live team coverage in Lincoln since this story broke. We continue tonight with our team coverage. WAND's Doug Wolf and Joe Strauss have been in Logan County all afternoon. We begin with Doug Wolf with what's happening now. After the shooting, the Illinois State Police were able to locate the suspect's car on Interstate 55. That touched off a high-speed chase from Rockford down to here in Lincoln on Interstate 55, with speeds sometimes reaching over 100 miles an hour. Eventually, here in Lincoln, the suspect's car went off the road and crashed into a ravine where it still sits now with the suspect inside. We asked the state police for an update on the current situation. It's, you know, we want this to come to a peaceful ending. So however long it takes, uh, you know, you know, we're going to stay here until, you know, that, that's the ideal ending to this is, is a peaceful, you know, nobody wants to have to, uh, uh, you know, fire their weapon. Now we talked to the NBC affiliate in Chicago. They're on the other side of I-55 from where I am now. They said over the last half hour they have heard a popping sound. It is not gunfire, but it's some kind of odd noise coming from that scene. Police are still in a large number on I-55. We'll, of course, keep you up to date throughout the evening. I'm Doug Wolf reporting live for WAND News in Lincoln. Thank you, Doug. Also on the scene all afternoon are Joe Ostrowski. Uh, Joe, we understand the inter interstate still shut down. Uh, what's the alternative route for folks in that area? Yeah, as the snow is letting up, you can see a little bit better the vehicles that are at this point parked still on Interstate 55. Some police vehicles, some other vehicles, and actually now can see a number of people uh, walking about up there as well. Uh, so some movement underway at this point, but uh, traffic, of course, is stopped on Interstate 55 from... Um, uh, from Business 55 on through 155, police are rerouting traffic through Lincoln. However, certainly big delays there if you're heading on on 55 either north or south. Also, we're told by Amtrak that one of their trains, train 303, was delayed earlier today uh, in Bloomington out of concerns that it would be traveling through this area as well. Again, we're going to continue being out here through the evening, finding out what we can to bring into you as this negotiation and situation continues. Live in Logan County, Joe Ostrowski, WAND News. Thanks, guys. Still a developing situation out there. How did it all begin? Well, it all started at a hotel in Rockford around 9 this morning, where U.S. Marshals were serving a warrant for Brown. Brown opened fire with a rifle, striking the deputy. A woman in the room was also shot but survived. Brown had been wanted since last December for allegedly breaking into homes in Bloomington and crashing his car into other vehicles during a getaway. That's right. Also, Floyd Brown then took off from that situation, leading state police on a high speed chase heading south from Rockford. Speeds reportedly got up to 150 miles an hour. This video filmed by a viewer on I-55 near Funks Grove. State police speeding after Brown. Investigators say it's believed Brown caused at least one crash because of this chase. Now, records in previous reports by WAND News show Floyd Brown has an extensive criminal history. Now, he turned himself in in Sangamon County in 2010 after being accused of kidnapping two girls, his 16 year old girlfriend and her three year old daughter. Both were found safe. State records show Floyd Brown also got 13 years in prison for several home break ins in Macon County in 2011, but that he is now on parole. In Sangamon County, records there reveal Floyd Brown has an extensive criminal history in Sangamon County, mainly home invasions with cases involving a restraining order for domestic violence, disorderly conduct, as well as resisting police officers. Be sure to stay with WAND News on air and online for the latest developments in this ongoing story. Download the WAND News app to your mobile device. And of course, head to our website, WANDTV.com. Saturday, your forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, breaking news. We continue to follow in Logan County right now. Uh, word just into the newsroom that apparently Floyd Brown, uh, this situation may have been resolved. Joe, what can you tell us? Yeah, a police uh, I just spoke with tell us that they do now have that uh, individual in custody, that there is some injury and that that person, that suspect, is being taken to a hospital for treatment. 
Again, state police tell us that that person is in custody, that suspect in custody being taken to a hospital for treatment. We're going to continue to await additional information as we can get it. Uh, live again in Logan County, Joe Strowski, WAND News. All right, the latest there. Thanks, Joe. I want to bring you an update of the breaking news happening in Logan County, that standoff, the lengthy one with police involving Floyd Brown, the man who uh, police say shot and killed a U.S. Marshal in Rockford earlier today. That standoff has apparently now ended, as we have heard from our own Joe Ostrowski. Yeah, you're looking at a live picture of an ambulance there at the scene on I-55 that has been blocked off for hours as the standoff has now ended. We understand that Brown is likely hurt and being taken away to a hospital. Let's go to Bob now with our weather. Welcome back. The suspect in Logan County in a standoff there that has ended and we have team coverage tonight. That's We've right. Been following the it suspect all day. is in custody. WAD's Joe Ostrowski. Uh, Joe, you uh, have been out there all day. Some important developments tonight. What uh, can you tell us? Just to reiterate, this all began around 930 this morning in Rockford with the service of a warrant ended here in Logan County just minutes ago with the arrest of Floyd Brown, told again by police that the Springfield man is being taken to a hospital for treatment of some injuries sustained in the course of this whole situation. We're ex expecting additional information from authorities this evening. We'll bring that to you live on air and online at WANDTV.com. Live in Logan County, Joe Ostrowski, WAND News. News at 6 starts now. We want, we want it to end peacefully. I mean, you, you never want to have to, uh, you never want to have to take a life. And it has ended. Tonight we have team coverage as state police arrest a man near Lincoln for shooting and killing a deputy near Rockford today. Good evening. Thanks for being with us. We've just learned that Floyd Brown is in custody and is being taken to a hospital. Investigators say Brown shot and killed McHenry County Deputy Jacob Keltner in Rockford this morning. McHenry, that deputy is on, that man is on the U.S. Marshals Task Force and he was issuing an arrest warrant for Floyd. That happened around nine at an extended State America hotel there. Brown sent police on a high speed chase before he crashed just outside of Lincoln on I-55. After hours of negotiation, he is now at a hospital. And just a mile from that crash where the eight hour standoff happened is our team. WAND's Doug Wolf, what's happening right now? This day long standoff ended about one hour ago. State police earlier today chased the suspect from Rockford all the way down to Lincoln on Interstate 55, where he eventually crashed and ended up in a ravine. State police had the car surrounded, put a perimeter around the car, and then waited him out. Eventually, shortly before 5 o'clock, there were several loud bangs, and those bangs turned out to be what they call flash bangs, sort of like grenades, but they don't explode. It's to stun the person that they're trying to arrest. The arrest was made. The suspect has injuries. He has been taken to a nearby hospital. So this was a long day. Interstate 55 still closed right now, and with me right now is Joe Ostrowski. Joe, uh, what a nightmare oh. for the for the public. It was tough for the police all day, but it was also a nightmare for the commuting or traveling public here in Illinois. That's right, and you're talking about a day-long situation that began with that warrant service at 9.30 this morning in Rockford, ended in the 5 o'clock hour here in Logan County. That, that large portion of uh, Interstate 55 from Business 55 on down to 155 remains closed. Police vehicles and others still on the interstate at this hour. Traffic being diverted through Lincoln earlier today. Uh, Amtrak service stopped uh, because, again, of the risk uh, of traveling through this area while this standoff continued. We've uh, just uh, heard from state police in the past few minutes. We're expecting additional information from them later this evening. We'll bring that to you uh, on air and online. Live in Logan County, Joe Strowski, WAND News. And that shooting suspect, Floyd Brown, has a, a long criminal history. WAND's Darren Mullen continues our team coverage now with the breakdown. Don, Sean, Floyd Brown has an extensive criminal history running from the Sangamon in Macon counties on up to Bloomington. He turned himself in in Sangamon County in 2010 after being accused of kidnapping two girls. His 16 year old girlfriend and her three year old daughter both were found safe. Also in Sangamon County, Brown had cases involving violating a restraining order for domestic violence, disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. 
He also faced weapons charges and unlawful restraint. In Macon County, Brown had three cases of home burglaries against him in 2011. He also had another home burglary case in McLean County that same year. In just this past December, Bloomington police were looking for Brown after a string of burglaries. Officers say he got in his car and evaded police before crashing. They say Brown left the scene of that crash and then disappeared. Again, this is still a developing story. We're sure to get more information throughout the evening, so be sure to stay with WAND News both on air and online for all the latest details. Live in studio, Darren Mullen, WAND News. And we are learning more about the fallen officer. That's right. The McHenry County Sheriff says Deputy Jacob Keltner was 35 years old and a deputy in McHenry County for almost 13 years. And tonight, Governor J.B. Pritzker says the people of Illinois join the family of Keltner mourning the fallen officer. His thoughts and prayers are with the first responders and residents affected by today's events. All of Illinois grieves for the fallen. And our prayers are with the families of those who have been injured in the line of duty and the families of those that we've lost. We owe all of them a debt of gratitude. Pritzker says it's been a tough start to the year as governor with recent deaths. We are learning more about the charges against the man who shot a U.S. Marshal. Uh, officials say they are holding Floyd Brown with no bond tonight. And the charges have been raised to first-degree murder charges, federal murder charges. Yep, that's in Winnebago County. Right. So, uh, of course, that tying into the uh, shooting there that happened in Rockford. That Again, killed. that standoff did end uh, with the suspect being taken into custody in Logan County and is now being transported back to Rockford. Probably not tonight. Well, he will be. Yeah, probably right. not tonight because right. he was injured. Uh, in that uh, standoff that did end, as we heard from Doug Wolf and Joe Ostrowski, who have been there. This is a news conference being held by uh, authorities in Rockford now, where that whole ordeal began earlier today. News and weather. A tense day in Logan County, as a chase and standoff disrupted thousands of lives. Plus, more about the deputy killed that triggered the manhunt and the condition of the suspect, Floyd Brown, after being taken into custody. And the new plan put out by the governor about the amount of income taxes that comes out of your paycheck. WAND News at 10 starts now. The man police say shot and killed a U.S. Marshal in the hospital tonight. He was injured after crashing his car during a police chase in Logan County today. He was driving at speeds over 100 miles per hour. Tonight we have team coverage on the deadly shooting in Rockford that led to a police chase and standoff in Logan County. And good evening. Thanks for being with us. WAD News brought you the story all day. Tonight, that hours long standoff is over, but not before a life was lost. Right, the ordeal began just after nine this morning at a Rockford hotel. Members of a U.S. Marshals Task Force approached a room where Floyd Brown was staying to serve an arrest warrant. They heard shots fired inside the room. A woman in the room was injured. Police say Brown ran from the room and shot Deputy Jacob Keltner before fleeing in a car. Keltner later died. Brown now faces first degree murder charges. Based on the information we have at this point, no law enforcement officers fired any rounds during this incident. So we believe that based on what we know at this time that the female victim was injured by the suspect's rounds. If convicted, he could face the death penalty. Right now, he is being held without bond. And after the shooting, Brown took off. After being spotted, he led officers on a high-speed chase you see here before he crashed that vehicle into a ravine outside the town of Lincoln on Interstate 55. For hours, he was held up in his vehicle. WAND's Darren Mullen with what happened in Lincoln and how it all came to an end. Sean, this all ended about five hours ago, not far from where we're standing, when police took Floyd Brown into custody. But the morning and afternoon hours were very tense out here, while Brown led police on a chase that ended relatively close to Lincoln on I-55. That chase at time reached speeds of more than 100 miles per hour. Brown crashed his car into a ravine off of I-55 after troopers rammed his vehicle. State troopers shut down the highway for hours, diverting busy interstate traffic elsewhere. And during the standoff, troopers said a peaceful resolution was all they could have hoped for. We want it to end peacefully. I mean, you, you never want to have to, uh, you never want to have to take a life. And so 
yeah, it may it may be somewhat of an inconvenience. Traffic is moving, may, might not be moving as fast as everyone wants to, but to bring this to a peaceful resolution, that's our main goal. People in the Lincoln area were told to remain indoors while the standoff continued. Police tried to communicate with Brown inside the crash vehicle multiple times, but Brown would cut off negotiations before they could get going in earnest. But around five this evening, law enforcement was able to take Brown into custody, ending the hours long standoff with the help of flashbangs. Brown is now recovering in a hospital from non life threatening injuries. Once he's cleared medically, he will then be transferred to FBI custody. Live in Logan County, Darren Mullen, WAND News. Thank you, Darren. We dug into Brown's past. He has a lengthy criminal record. The most recent back in December in Bloomington, police put out a warrant for him after a string of burglaries. He's charged in Macon, Sangamon and Champaign counties for similar crimes. And in 2010, he was arrested for kidnapping his then 16 year old girlfriend and her three year old child. The event spurred an Amber Alert. Now, those who live in Logan County breathing a little easier tonight after being told to stay inside during the whole standoff. That's right. WAND's Tristan Hardy talked with some people who were caught off guard. Well, Don Sean, at first it was a lot of confusion. People were trying to figure out why one interstate road was closed off for hours. That is until they learned a deputy was shot and killed. Uh, maybe people don't, you know, it's an inconvenience for a lot of people. This is a busy interstate. Illinois State Police say the chase and standoff with Floyd Brown lasted for six hours. But at the end of the day, we took him into, into custody alive. And from our standpoint, that that's a success. Because of that, traffic on I-55 was blocked off. We're just traveling home from Chicago back down to St. Louis. This person was on his way to Texas. I thought it was an accident because uh, I saw in the news there was snow this way. Jaws were dropped and eyebrows raised when word got out about the standoff. It sounds unreal. Crazy world we live in right now. Second, we figured it was a snowstorm a related incident, not this crazy report that we're hearing right now. But more so at the fact that something this high profile happened in central Illinois. It is a little shocking. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Where does he go from here? Yeah, uh, he's going to go to the hospital and get you know treated. So leaving the standoff with Floyd Brown. I know this stuff happens anywhere, but uh, being down here in central Illinois, we're pretty immune to it for the most part. The talk around the town. All right, now the police have come and gone. Now Interstate 55 north and southbound are open again. Live in Logan County, I'm Tristan Hardy, WAND News. Back to you. All right, as Tristan reported, highways around the standoff are back open tonight. During the tense event, state troopers shut down I-55 and old Route 121, rerouted the thousands of vehicles that travel those highways daily. And we're learning more tonight about fallen Deputy Jacob Keltner. That's right. The 35 year old leaves behind a wife and two children. He was a deputy for McHenry County Sheriff's Department for nearly 13 years. A procession was held in his honor tonight. As you see here in Rockford, officials say they are working to help his family during this tragic time. Tonight, Governor J.B. Pritzker is mourning the loss of Deputy Keltner. He paused in the beginning of a news conference about taxes to say his thoughts and prayers are with the people affected by today's events. All of Illinois grieves for the fallen, and our prayers are with the families of those who have been injured in the line of duty and the families of those that we've lost. We owe all of them a debt of gratitude. Pritzker says it's been tough start to the year as governor with recent deaths. This is the second first responder death this week in Illinois. Meanwhile, Senator Tammy Duckworth calling for an end to violent criminals getting their hands on guns. She says today's events are devastating, but brings to light the issue of known criminals getting guns. She said, quote, we need to pass sensible legislation to address this gun violence epidemic, end quote. 